In this video, we're going to cover Commodore 64 emulation within the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. Ah, uh, the Commodore 64, another microcomputer I never experienced back in the day, but have grown to absolutely enjoy with modern interpretations like the C64 Mini and just general emulation projects. With the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch, we can even take advantage of Commodore 64 emulation on our new consoles, and it's pretty awesome, especially when you hook up a physical keyboard. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to get it set up, so let's dive in. The first step to getting Commodore 64 emulation up and running on your Xbox Series X and S is to install the Xbox version of RetroArch. It could be in dev mode, retail mode, doesn't matter, and you can even move your system folders to USB. Link to this playlist will be in the description below if you haven't already got it set up. The next thing we're going to need to do is source Commodore 64 games. You could dump the games from the Commodore 64 Mini if you happen to own one, and various other ways available as well as resorting to the shitty parts of the net to get them. I really don't care which way you go about doing it, just don't ask me for illegal download links because I will not provide any. But once you have your Commodore 64 games sourced, they will be in a variety of formats including D64, T64, CRT, and then we need to do a little bit of setup for multi file games. We need to make an M3U playlist file so that way these games can act as one single game. So I've already done it for two of my games and I'm going to show you how to do it with California games here. So California games had two discs with four sides total I believe that's how it worked. So we just need to make an M3U file to list all of these discs. So to do this if you're on Windows you can just right click go to new text document and then just save it as California games or whatever. Now just go ahead and get that opened up, and we're going to copy every single file name plus its extension into the text document. So if you don't have file extensions shown, go to the view tab and make sure that the file extensions is ticked. But then just go through and copy paste all the names. And once you have all those placed, go ahead and save the text document. And then you can close out of it. And now select the California Games text document and change the file extension from text to M3U. It'll give you a pop-up here saying, are you sure you want to change it? And we're going to say, heck yes, we do. And that is now ready to go. And with our Commodore 64 games all prepped, all we need to do now is add it to our preferred storage medium. Commodore 64 games do run from USB now as long as you have it set to NTFS and have set the security permissions as shown in the initial setup video, which is what I'm going to be doing today. So I'm just going to grab my Commodore 64 games, open up my USB drive, drop it into my games folder. And I already had them there, so I'm just going to tell it to replace them. That's fine. All set. Now, if you're on dev mode and using an S drive install and want to store them on the internal SSD, you can launch into your Durango FTP app and start the file share. And then back over on your computing device, you can access your Xbox file share using your preferred FTP method. Head into your S drive, program files, Windows apps, find your RetroArch folder with the X64 at the end, find the games folder, and drag them right on in. But once you have the games placed, we're ready to move back over to the Xbox. And back over on the Xbox, go ahead and get booted into RetroArch. Alright, so now I'm back over on the Xbox, I have my USB drive back in place, and we're ready to begin loading up some Commodore 64 content. And we're just going to skip ahead to making the game's playlist portion here because it's just better. But anyway, head down to import content and go to manual scan. From here, navigate to the directory you have your Commodore 64 game stored in. So if you're on dev mode using USB, it'll be under E. Retail mode under USB will be in D. And then internal SSD dev mode installs will be under S. So follow that file path. But anyway, navigate to your games directory. Choose your Commodore 64 games folder and tell it to scan this directory. Now for system name, we're going to press right, or well, it's just right here, Commodore 64, there we go. Default core, same thing, press right until we get to the Commodore section here, and we are going to be using Commodore C64 Vice X64 SC Accurate. We're on an Xbox Series X, it's got some power in it, so we can use the Accurate core. Now we're actually going to be doing this playlist creation in two scans. So for this first scan, we're going to turn scan recursively off and then head down and start the scan. Now we're going to head back up, turn scan recursively back on, and we're going to set a file extension of M3U. So that first scan found all of our Commodore 64 games in the root of our Commodore 64 games folder. 
And this second scan is going to be looking in all of the subfolders as well as the main folder, but we're telling it to only look for the M3U files that we created for our multi-file games. And we're going to start the scan again. And now when we back out, we'll have a new Commodore 64 playlist here on the left with all of our games inside. And there we go. And then to play a game, all you need to do is press on it and tell it to run. And there we go. We have loaded up California games on the Xbox Series X and S version of RetroArch. And the reason I did this was very specific. This is a multi-sided game, and it will let us show off a number of different control options available within RetroArch. So, if you happen to have a real keyboard hooked up to your Xbox Series X and S, whenever you load up Commodore 64 emulation, make sure that you press the scroll lock key to turn game focus on, so that way all of your keyboard commands go directly to the core and not RetroArch. And with that being said, you can then use your keyboard to do a number of different things, like you could on a real Commodore 64. So I press spacebar to activate the game itself, and it's telling me to insert the next disc, which is fine. So to do this, go into your RetroArch quick menu, navigate down to disc control, eject your current disc, and then you can change the disc image to the next one you need. So it's asking me to insert side two. So I'm going to insert side two and tell it to insert the disc. And now it will load it up. It takes a bit to load up by default. But once it loads up, you can see I can navigate the menu here with my keyboard or my controller. It's set to automatically use a controller by default. Uh, just a little bit of info on controller support within uh, Commodore 64 though. If you go into your options menu on the RetroArch menu, there is an input options tab here. And when you scroll down, there is a joystick port here and it is set to port two automatically. Most Commodore 64 games use port two for player one input, but there are a number of them that will require port one. So if you load up a game and don't get any controller input, you might need to change it to port one to work. And then you can also choose the joystick port type between joystick paddles, mice, number of different things. And the great thing about Commodore 64 emulation is that the analog stick can work as a mouse. It's set to your left analog stick by default, but you could also change it to the right, both analogs, or turn it off. But you should be able to play a full range of Commodore 64 titles with this emulator. And if you don't happen to have a physical keyboard that you want to hook up, you also have access to a virtual keyboard within the Vice emulator here. You can press uh, the select button, back button on your Xbox controller to bring up the virtual keyboard, and that gives you all of the buttons here to use so you can navigate your games before you're able to use a joystick in them. You can even reset the game by pressing this red one right here. And I have no idea how to play uh, California games here, so I apologize for making this look really bad. I honestly have no idea how to play this game. But at least we can enjoy Commodore 64 games on our Xbox Series X and S. Alright, so for those of you looking to get Commodore 64 emulation up and running on your Xbox Series X and S, that is the basic process involved in doing so. Get your games, put them on the internal SSD, and make sure you made M3U files for all of your multi-file discs. Let's go ahead and cover some of the advanced core options available to us with Commodore 64 emulation. So, going into our RetroArch quick menu, we're going to go ahead and go back down to the Options tab. And our first option is to choose our model of Commodore 64. The Commodore 64 was far more popular over in Europe than it was in the US, so a vast majority of games are actually built for PAL regions. But a number of games supported both PAL and NTSC formats, so you can choose between them here as you see fit. Next up, you could choose a RAM expansion unit. Some games might need this. I'm not the most familiar with Commodore 64 RAM expansion kits, so if you know you need it, you know you need it. Next up, Jiffy DOS. This requires Jiffy DOS BIOS files placed in your RetroArch system folder inside a Vice folder. We are not going to be covering that in this video because I'm more interested in just the games than running Jiffy DOS. And we're going to skip over the next couple of options and move down to media options. First up is cartridge. We're not going to be messing with this in this tutorial. Next up, auto start. Leave this one on, otherwise you'll have to type in executables, and I mean that's great for authenticity and stuff, but if you just want plug and play, just leave this one on on. Next up, automatic load warp. This is great for your tape games, because Commodore 64 tape loading takes forever. So turn this on if you want your discs and tapes to load quicker. Unfortunately it does mute the drive sound emulation, so 
for those of you looking for a truly authentic experience, that's not going to be there with this on, but it makes things load much faster, which is worth it in my mind. True Drive emulation, leave that on, and we're going to leave virtual device traps off, and we're going to skip over the next three. Backing out and going to video options, we could choose our pixel aspect ratio between PAL, NTSC, 1 for 1, or leave it on automatic. I recommend leaving it on automatic personally. Next up, zoom mode. This is turned off, but you can use it to zoom your games in to remove some just blank areas of the screen. And then you can even manually set it here. Zoom mode crop, you can choose between horizontal and vertical, set it to a 16 by 9, 10, 4 by 3, 5 by 4 aspect ratio. And then you could set the manual crops here. Status bar, you could choose if you want it on the bottom, full, minimum, basic, or on the top. Then you could choose your virtual keyboard theme here. Change it between a bunch of different colors. Transparency. Next, we have our Commodore 64 emulation color depth. It's set to 1000, 16 bit by default, but you could turn it up to millions, 24 bit. It does require a content restart, so just do so if you happen to change it. Next, we have a light gun pointer option. And next, we have a bunch of different uh, display options here for the VIC 2. First up is the VIC 2 filter, and this is kind of a CRT emulation effect. You can blur the image or you can set it to only 50% blur or 10% blur if you want to have the effect, but not as strongly. Next, we could change the color palette. Set to Colador by default. This is technically the most accurate, but you could choose between a number of different ones here. It's gonna be personal preference on that one, so choose as you see fit. Next, you could change the gamma, brightness, and contrast, saturation, and tint of the image as well. So you can manually tweak the image to your liking. All right, backing out of there, let's go into audio options. First up is drive sound emulation. It makes a tape deck noise when you're trying to load tapes. It doesn't work if automatic load, load warp is on though. Next, data set sounds. You need a tap image for this to work, so we're not gonna cover it here. Next up, audio leak emulation. If you wanna have the interference that would come from a real system, you could turn this one on, and you can choose the effect percentage here. Next up, we got our SID engine, SID engine. And you can choose between a couple of different things. Reset is accurate. Reset FP is more accurate. So you can choose between these on Xbox. Shouldn't need to use fast SID. Then you can choose the model here. SID extra. Not sure if we really need to mess with this or not. I haven't seen a need for it in any of my testing. But again, I don't have the most Commodore 64 games or knowledge with the system. Reset sampling. You can leave this on resampling. We don't need to turn it to any of the fast ones on Xbox. Then you could adjust the filters. Then you can turn on a sound expander, and then you can change the sample rate. All right, backing out, we got input options once again. We talked about this a little bit before, but you could choose if your analog stick is controlling the mouse on the left or right or both analogs. Adjust the dead zones here, the speed, D-pad mouse speed, mouse speed in general, keyboard pass through. I'm gonna leave this off because I'll just use game focus on my own physical keyboard attached to the Xbox. Gonna skip over the next couple of options, go down to Turbo Fire. You can enable Turbo Fire for your buttons, and then which buttons are being used for the Turbo button. And then you can set the Turbo Speed here. Next, User Point Joystick Adapter. This is if you want to play with more than two players, you can set this up. Joystick Port, like we talked about earlier. Port Type. And then you can set the Face Button option for which button is equal to Fire. And next up, we have Hotkey Mapping for the Commodore 64 emulation here so you can switch things automatically if you have a physical keyboard hooked up so for example joy point one and two for those games you can press on the right control button on your physical keyboard to swap them but you can set hotkeys here as you see fit next up retro pad mapping options you can set your retro pad mapping options here for all of your games and that's going to do it as far as core options are concerned within the vice core if you have things you want to have set for certain games but not others you can go to manage core options and save them as a game options file but that's going to do it for Commodore 64 emulation. As always, if you happen to have any questions on getting this course set up, feel free to ask me in the comment section below and I will do my best to try to help you out. Commodore 64 emulation is one of my weaker systems, so I do apologize on that. Now, if you could all do me a couple of huge favors. If you haven't done so already, hit that like or dislike button, just depending on how much you like today's video. And if you haven't done so already, hit that sub button so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. It goes a long way to helping us keep the place growing and bringing more content and updates just like this to all of you. If you'd like to further help support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and we're super grateful to each and every one of you for that. Big shout out to all of our current champions. You are all just so amazing for believing what we do and helping us keep it going. Thank you so much for the ongoing support. 
Y'all are freaking rock stars. But that's going to do it for this one. So until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome and we will see you back next video.